Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. The reason why I am here in Joe Biden's basement talking to you about uh, migration and conflict is precisely because we are a species that likes to move. Um, international globalization of human beings uh, is part of the reason why the international system has evolved the way that it has, and also the reason why uh, COVID-19 has spread uh, the way that it has and why we're all on lockdown. Um, and so today, I think it's a really interesting time to be talking about migration, uh, its effects on human security and conflict, um, because by and large, large swaths of the international system have ground to a halt. Not the movement of economic flows of money uh, or of goods, but um, by and large, the movement of people. And so today, I think um, it is a unique time to be trying to talk about these issues, and it's particularly relevant. So for today in this class, uh, I normally have the motivating question as what effects does international migration have uh, on the likelihood of, of conflict? But today I have an additional question. Once all of this ends, because it will end at some point in time, pandemics um, might last for a long time, but they don't last forever, um, for better or for worse. So once this era has passed, will we go back to the before times in which human um, mobility is in an unprecedented era of speed uh, and low cost that our um, ancestors couldn't even uh, imagine, right? Um, will it go back to the way that it has, or is there gonna be uh, some uh, new normal? And I think the answers that we reach relevant to that depends on what we think the causes of migration are. Um, and so today I want to start talking about initial patterns of global, uh, global migration, where people have gone, uh, and the size and scale of the problem, which answers the why should we care, uh, and then try to in, uh, intersperse in today's uh, discussion the voices of um, people who have actually migrated. So I have a number of uh, videos from areas that you are familiar with. Um, the Syrian conflict is going to be the major case study for today, but then I also wanted to bring in patterns of migration you might not be as familiar with, um, specifically um, migration across the Darien Gap, um, the one gap in um, uh, land uh, transport between North America and South America in um, the Panama and Colombian region. Let's talk about initial patterns, talk about a couple of specific cases, talk about the causes uh, of migration, and then move on to some of the effects of international migration, specifically linking to the class's topic of uh, civil conflict, as well as uh, international conflict to a lesser extent, and then spend uh, the remainder of the time talking about environmental migration. Uh, linking to the larger, broader climate change and environmental change issues that we've touched on already and how those have been uh, driving um, some conflicts like uh, the Syrian conflict, as well as how environmental migration might also uh, ha can explain some other patterns that we've seen uh, in the world. So the broader question, why do people migrate? What effects that they have? Uh, how is the current system uh, and what we're experiencing likely to change that or maybe not? Uh, and then talk about uh, uh, the specific drivers of migration and the links to conflict. Um, now, I know this is, we're getting to halfway through the semester and that you have a lot of other things on your plate. Um, if uh, time has taught me anything in teaching for the last 15 years is that there is a gradual crescendo of stress um, as, uh, as we move along and assessments are due and the amount of time that you seem to have towards uh, doing those things uh, doesn't seem to be uh, sufficient. So I understand the time pressures that you're going through. I'm going through them myself with my um, research and service as well, though my kind of deadlines when you have a real job they don't seem to be quite as um, pressing and have the same kind of uh, effects on people's lives than you do at earlier so I understand that um, 
And I also understand that you're, you're taking a lot of classes uh, at the same time. You're dealing with COVID-related travel restrictions and other things that could affect your own economic livelihood. So as a way to try to, to ease that pain uh, a little bit, I've moved the deadline for finishing the lecture and workshop questions due time from um, this Sunday at 11.59 uh, p.m. to the, I think was it, the 20th of September, the end of the teaching break by 11.59 p.m. because I'm gonna be focusing on reading your literature reviews um, and so that'll give you a little bit of time to finish this material. I really am sincere in wanting to get you to spend time thinking about the issues of migration and how it intersects with the topics in this class, a environmental, uh, structural, um, uh, distribution and change, uh, human security issues. So once you get your research paper um, or your uh, literature review done, then um, if, if, I mean, you're listening to this now, so it could be easier to just get it done, rip off the Band-Aid, take a break from your literature reviews. But for those of you who might need a little bit extra time, these videos are not going anywhere. They'll be on uh, YouTube when you have um, some time. So yeah, I, I think this this topic is relevant to some of the major issues in uh, Australian politics ever since I've been here for uh, seven years, as well as the society that I came from in the United States. Uh, and the worries about political violence and conflict are sadly something that are not going away uh, in a lot of the different countries that we're going to look at over the course of this semester. So it's a topic that matters. Um, it matters to me. I'm an economic migrant, as I'm going to get to in a second. Um, and hopefully it will be interesting and relevant uh, to your uh, research as well. So let's get started. 